Hello and welcome to Flooring Models. Here we are with you for Tool Tuesday on the 19th of October 2021. And as you can probably see, just down in here, I've been pushing on very nicely this week with the uh, Delta 4. This is my sub work through. None of this is together, by the way, so this is all still a loose fit. I haven't actually glued any of this in. I have to say, so far though, hasn't thrown up any problems at all. It does have a lot of bulkheads. It's not a straightforward. Uh, obviously, you'll see all of this, but considering it's literally just one sheet of paper, um, it's quite in depth. Like the screws at the back, you have to put all the blades in. So there's five of those and it's tiny. You know, we are talking minuscule. In fact, let me show you one. This is one here. These are absolutely tiny, tiny in here. So consequently, trying to line all those up and get them all sort of, you know, in place is a lot of fun. One of them went really well. And then the second one took me, I don't know, probably half hour to get right. And again, because it's very small, the parts start to melt and yeah, so forth and so on. But generally, as you can see, there's plenty of it going down in here. A lot of this stuff is supposed to be movable as well. So we're not worried about that because clearly we don't need it to move. But as you can see, you've got bulkheads that make up uh, down in here. And again, because of this class, it's not like some of the others where it's just two halves coming together. We've got three part hull at the bottom, two sides in the top then we've got a top hole that goes in up here as well so there's lots of things that need to line up uh, and to get in place but I have to say I haven't had any problems with it the only one I had is I wasn't sure we got this sort of seam running underneath here if it's supposed to have it because in the picture on the box it doesn't have it uh, and then obviously it could just be about on the water line so very difficult to see but anyway after doing a little bit more homework we did find it but generally we've all gone in I've got to do all the cleanup work yet so as you can see we've got a nice glue seam down in here I want that to totally shrink and go off and like we said before none of this is actually fitted in yet it's just all a soft fit but it just goes to show that you might be able to see some of the bulkheads down in there the biggest problem I've got is that it's black so trying to show it on camera when it's black is a nightmare. And even for me, having to see where details are, I've got my magnifiers on, I've actually been using the light on my magnifiers to illuminate it, especially down in amongst the down in here for getting in there and stuff like that. But it does go together really, really nicely. And once you do get it lined up, and again, those bulkheads can be a little bit of a pain. So that's why we talk about it. You probably see on here how well that sits on this. Once it's pushed down, it is absolutely seamless so glue wise is really nice the other thing as well is that i was a little bit skeptical about the plastic how it's going to work with the glue but touch wood we haven't had a problem either it's gone down really really well and for once i am using pretty much exclusively this so we're using the contactio glue again because it's such big areas on this if you're using extra thins especially the quick set it dries so quick you don't get a chance to glue anything together. So again, by using good old favorite, using the contactier glue like this, and again, having the needles quite nice for just running it along in lines, but also we can get down the bottom here um, for round bulkheads and things like that, and making sure they're all aligned and making sure they're all in the right place. It gives you that little bit of wiggle room. And like I say, the nice thing with using a slow setting glue like the old fashioned ones like this, is that one is, is that it, it acts like a lubrication if you like so if you've got bulkheads by using a thick glue it tends to slide into place yeah if you were using quick sets and stuff like that they need to be in there first then you glue it but because this is three part hole the last one is this section under here this third here pushing that in and getting it in and feeling for it is a bit of a nightmare to be honest these are easy because you can put your hand in and just knock nudge them into place but there's one at the front that was a little bit of a nightmare to get in but it's in there now and it went in at the end of the day is a little satisfying click and it all seemed to line up. So again, nice. It's a lot longer than I thought it was going to be because by the time we get the screws on and all the rest of it, this thing's going to be about 48 centimetres, something else like that. Don't know what the official size is on the box, but uh, a lot bigger than I thought. But it's quite a slinky thing. It reminds me of the fuselage of the uh, Bear Bomber. But uh, again, first sub I've ever done. Going together is probably only going to be two or three parts and we've done with that one. What's going to be interesting though is moving on to one, making it seamless. So we're going to be going and doing along doing a lot of cleanup with this, especially down at the butt on the belly uh, and things like that. So again, we're going in there with fillers. We'll be getting in there with like Mr. Surfaces, making sure we're all good. And then we're going to be going into that sort of cool paint job on this one. And again, because it's this 
navel thing. You've got this very clever way that the artist has done here, and I'm going to take a lot of my cues from there, is that there isn't much black on it. It's, it's very much dark blues, very dark greys. You've got purples in here. There's even channels of red as it's reflecting the light, something I'm going to try and recreate as well. So on a small scale, when you're into this, and we, we obviously scale comes into it, 1 to 350 scale, you treat it uh, almost like art. You know, because you've got to get in there, you've got to get those details. A lot of the time we talk about, obviously, on big models. So, you know, I have a very large one here. Uh, so, obviously, when you're on something like this, you need to break it up and make the eye look round it and all the rest of it, just because it is so big. Well, on this, it's something similar. Because it's not much going on, it's a tube, let's face it, you need your eye to be drawn round. And there is some markings onto this one. To be honest, the markings do look very nice. You can see just down in here, we've got some very much down here, but trying to get this cheat line on as a decal, I think is going to be a bit of a nightmare. So I'm actually contemplating masking it. Uh, so we're actually just paint it on there because I think doing that would be a lot easier. We have got a natural line that we could follow down in here, as in the actual line running down from the scene line, which I'm sure that's the reason it's got it, was to follow that down as well. But we need to sand that out because, again, it's got a bit of a, you know, various things going along. There's compartments on there and stuff like that, panel lines to sort out and put good. So we're going to lose a lot of that down there. So it should be a few little challenges ahead, but it's all sort of for the greater good, if you know what I mean. So it'll be interesting to see how I go around and tackle those ones. But again, you can then use this on other things, so on other projects. So if you were planning on putting a giant cheat line down, you know, a pinstripe down, something else like that, it's the same thing. But I think really doing it the old fashioned car way of perhaps popping it down, long way off and then dropping it in so it's a perfect straight line should work really really well for it as well so it should look quite nice and again you can weather it when it's a decal it's a bit difficult to weather it but when it's actually painted on as well you can fade it you can chip it you can do various things to it as well so should be a lot of fun so it might seem like a simple build and not much to this but actually long term I think it's going to be quite a large project so from that point of view really looking forward to it on this particular one so that's what we're doing at the moment. Part one of that will be up with you obviously on Friday as we make our way through on that particular build. So again, what's nice with it, as you can see, it doesn't take up any room. It's lovely, it just sits in here and it's out of the way. You can't do that with many model kits. I have got reviews coming up for you this week as well, so don't panic. I'm still gonna be doing the um, Centurion. Obviously got the AFE 135th version of that. And also I've got that Academy B52. Uh, and again, 144, baby one compared to that one up there. Again, looking forward to doing that one as well, which we'll make our way through. I have got some other bits coming in, but I don't know if they'll be in this week. So we'll see how that one pans out. But getting back on track, we are sort of back to Tool Tuesday. So you might remember last week we brought this little lot back. So I thought we could actually have a look in here and see exactly what we've got. So to start off with, I thought we'd have a look at AK's putty tool. Now, I know what you're thinking now. Jesus, Bill, you can go out and you can buy them dental tools and all the rest of it. I totally agree. So we will see what this little thing is like. So usual way. If we can slip him out here, the Slim Jim Shank. Actually, that's heavier than I thought it was going to be. Um, so really what we've got down in here is a double-ended tool. No sniggering at the back. So we've got a sort of bladed end on here. Again, with a curve onto it. So you've got a flat and you've got the curve, which is very reminiscent to actually my seam scraper, which I do like having that because what it enables you to do is put it down one way and then flip it over and pull it back the other way. Uh, where if it's one-sided, you sort of have to move around with it. On the other side, we've got more of a flattening tool, but also these are, I don't know if you can see it, it's bladed, it's thinner. It's like a sort of spatula for getting underneath. So again, like I've often said with a lot of these tools is I don't just use them for like this for putty in. You could use this in construction to help wedge and get down places. So classic example is in here. You've got one of these tools. You can get them in here if you needed to put a little bit of spread in there as well, which to be honest, I did uh, to get the tubes to line up. You could have actually used that if I'd had it instead of wedging it with bits of cocktail stick as I did before. So it's not just for putties and things. So that's the thing to it. So that's that one there. Again, it's strong. It's sturdy. There's no flex into it at all and it's one of those tools you'll buy once and literally you'll never buy again that's the whole point it's a one and done type thing so it says here it's a bar tool for putty uh, there's another essential tools for the serious modeler for his workshop blah de blah fair enough uh, part number for this one is AK9196 as you can see down in there and if you want to freeze that to read that you can 
and you can freeze that as well down in there you can so that actually to be honest is one of those things that will sit in my tub and i probably will use it because currently and i have them right next to me because i use them i have these so i've got little bits and this is thick stuff and i tend to trim them to shape and things like that but also i've got thin ones as well for getting into areas and if obviously if you've seen the video that i did on the spitfire for getting into areas you'll know that having something that's a handy little tool down in here so for instance we needed to get into this type of area so it makes you wonder how this would have been and to be honest as you can see that would have been quite nice just to get in there uh, and would clean out very nicely so you've got that edge you can get in obviously you've got a push tool as well for getting in things like that and then up here you could easily just rub them in and all things like that we will have a go with it in a minute and again for these ones down in here you've got probably a nice area for coming in but if you did want to use the more of the pointed one you could just come in and run it down so it's quite handy for getting into wing roots and all those areas where traditionally you're probably going to need filler that's what I mean by it. So if you were coming in here and needed to do cleanup, it's not bad. It's a nice size. It's not too big. It's not too clumsy. So again, it's going to be a wipe clean. It's metal, easy cleanup, good to go. To be honest, nothing to get massively excited about. It's just one of those tools that I think is probably very handy to have in your, you know, your bars and your various areas around here. Stick it in your mug because it's one of those you just grab it and go. Cleanup will be doddle because it's metal. You literally just be a bit of thinners on a rag, give it a wipe and it keeps it clean and you're good to go. So that's pretty good with that one. Next up, we've got this. So down in here, we've got the Master Tools. Now, Master Tools, if you don't know, is Trumpeter. This is their sort of tool selection to it. And to be honest with you, some of their stuff you look at and you think, hmm, it's cheap, it's tacky and it's nasty. The trouble is it actually works. And in, I've got it here. As a matter of fact, this is a classic example of these. So I've got these, which uh, there's a video on it as well. And it's just a bit like this. It comes on a little fret, you cut them off, but it's got razor saws in it. But these actually, for what they are and the price you pay are really nice, but they are micro thin. These are the thinnest razor saws you'll have. And again, we've got this little guy down in here and they are bladed very very nice indeed there's a separate video i don't want to get confused with them all but some of their stuff honestly you look at it and you think like that it's just rubbish it does come off quite well and they also oh, they do this little guy as well which is a uh, for shimming area so you put your item onto it and cut onto it and use it as a jig so they do are good and i do use them that's the thing obviously master tools do everything from the actual I know we harp on about these because we can't get them at the moment, but these, which aren't too badly priced either, and then they do all things like hold and folds and all those things as well. A lot, lot cheaper than other manufacturers, shall we say. So that is the thing to it. But down in here, we have the putty tool. So I'm just interested to know how well this thing will stand up. So again, you've got it on a tray system. So what you can do is you pop it out like this, and then we have our tray, so we'll just cut that one and that one. And I'm hopeful that this is a sort of impervious type of plastic. So if we do come along with lacquer thinners and that, it's not going to melt it. But we'll try it normally first, and then you'll just come along with your areas like that. Okay, let me shove that in a minute. And then really, you've just got your tools for putting in and knocking up but you've got some great shapes down here you've got a pointy one and a chisel one i'll take this off because to be honest i will use this and it's just nice to have a bit and to be honest normally i use a scrap piece of something uh, for using your tools and various things get out of there that's it okay i'll we'll just do these two that's what else. so we just snip these all off these look interesting because they're nice and small and pokey shaped. It just depends on if these will work with lacquer or acrylic, which we'll do a quick test on in a minute. So I'll ruin mine so you don't have to. So there we go. So that's what you're left with. You've got a mixing tray, which is fair enough. I've got some putty somewhere around here. Now I have on this. Okay. So you can take your putty, the idea being is, we'll try, try a bit just there. I won't get tons of this out because we don't need it. But, <clears throat> and then depending on the tool you've got, 
and what size you can pop it down in here the great thing about this as well if you wanted to add a little bit of water okay you can just pop a little bit of water into this and you can thin it that's probably way too much water but you know what I mean and then you could use your other tool to make it up as well so we're just down in here you could thin you out your, your areas or you could use it thick whichever you wanted to do and it's just on there there you go wipe on a paper towel he's nice and clean again so you could then just come in make up a pasty type one like this and then you're good to go so you could then just run your bead a bit like that come along with your buster here a buster <clears throat> I had another workout the weekend but we're running out of places to fill with you and then you can just come along and you just pop them in there just like that straightforward very very easy and again it's a nice way of containing it and you can have it and then clean that will be washing it out what i want to know though is these are are these all impervious to lacquers so if we just clear this out a minute obviously it's the nice thing it's nice and thingy so it depends on the plastic if it's uh you know like our bottles are made of we'll be absolutely fine but if it's not we're just about to find out the hard way so we just pop that on there for a minute and we'll just see what happens you can normally tell from discoloration so this is lacquer thinners on this yeah and it's the both of them are totally impervious to it so that's not a problem at all so you're not going to melt any of these plastics the white one is impervious to lacquer thinners and so is the other so if I just grab a bit of this this being solvent based get the cotton top off Oop. making a mess okay so what we'll do we can just come in here pop this down none of it's melting absolutely fine so this will last you a long long time so you don't have to worry about obviously using these with lacquers as you can see it's not melting any of the tools any of the equipment it's fine to use on these so easy cleanup then you can just come along with a little bit of lacquer thinners onto these and give them a rub which is more than you would do on certain plastics because otherwise it will melt but none of the tools are affected by lacquers or anything so it might look cheap and uh, you know as if it's not going to be much use or anything else like that but again if you need some spatulas these are very handy ones to have this sits down on here this one will be because it's obviously lack of cleanup but you'll get the idea you can just come along and it is literally like you so you haven't been affected so good thing about this is that you haven't got to worry about mixing up anything onto it you can put anything onto there including obviously your paints your lacquer base paints anything as well that you want to do you can pop straight down on there with no problem so the tools are unaffected by lacquers and so is the plastic so to be honest with you that was my only sort of worry that if it had been you know a different type of plastic that gets affected by lacquers it's just going to turn that into glue so no problem with that at all so there we go so that's quite good again these are all flexible so you can bend them about to get them into any shape or area you want to and again you've got these two smaller ones for great for getting in those little details and you've even got a pointy one as well for getting in but again it's funny because you you buy these things or you get these things and you think it's not going to last all of their stuff actually has lasted really really well so I'm very very impressed with that so anyway there we go that is the putty tray so again if you just want some quick putty tools and a tray for knocking it up to keep it to hand and things like that and to be honest i'm going to pinch that because i think that's actually quite a good idea right okay two down uh three to go okay next up we've got a paint stirrer mixer so 
I hope I've got batteries. So technically this is what one of these are. This one here by Badger is actually a general one you can buy anywhere. Um, and normally they are coffee froppers and they have a little whisk on the end, but it's basically a round one. It's designed for mixing up your paint. We've done it loads and loads of times before. Again, so that's that one. But obviously this is Trumpetti's version here. Exactly the same. Um, it's two AA batteries, so we might have to nick the other one out of that. Uh, but it gives you a little bit of gump on it down at the back, just like that. So if I just pop the back off, we can have a look. And again, doesn't look too bad. It's obviously a little bit shorter than the other one, but the other one's designed for going in big glasses, where obviously we're using it for paint. So that's what that is. Switch feels good. It doesn't feel cheap and nasty. So that's quite handy. Okay, so in the back here, we're assuming it's two AAs. So I think these are AAs. As you can see, there's a, a very similar design. Crack, are these rechargeables in here? They've been in that long. Okay, which way round are we? Yep, no, we are that way round. Are we? Yes. Okay, that goes in. That goes on. God, I'll tell you what, that's a lot smoother than the other one. Okay, so let's give it the ultimate test, because you know us, we don't do things by half. Let's stick it in some real thick, gloopy th of this again. So that's not too bad. Let me just put the close the camera on. All right, so the idea being is you come in, you can probably see on here it's toothed. So it's actually, hopefully will stir it up quite nicely. And this is really, really thick in here. but it's great for mixing up. That seems to do the trick. So pulling out very slowly. There we go, that actually doesn't turn bad. So what we do, we're gonna do a proper on test though. So let's stick the other one in on the same batteries and that will give us a comparison between the two. So that's the one there. Which one was, which way around were these? That's that way. Again, so we'll be able to see from a motor point of view. Put it in first. I'll be honest with you, I think the Badger one's got a better motor in it. Because this one doesn't matter if I'm near the top or we're pushing right down. And I know it's been mixed up a bit more now, but you can probably get the idea to it. But I think, to be honest with you, the Badger one is probably got a little bit more power than the the little guy just there but I have to say it's not a lot in it and I think I paid quite a lot of money for that particular one uh, which is quite a good piece of kit don't get me wrong but there we go that's the Badger or the Master Tool mixer done a good job as you can see that's really done a pretty nice job in there actually uh, no problem at all I highly recommend it dead handy again this is one of those things and I'm not going to go through it now because you're going to get the camp vortex the camp shaker the camp mixer the camp shake it the camp just put a paintbrush in and mix it it's personal choice at the end of the day guys it doesn't matter it's just how you want to mix your paint if you want to use a paint mixer use a paint mixer if you want to use a vortex generator have a vortex generator if you want to use a paint shaker get vibrated to death then obviously get one of those if you want to put it in a jigsaw tool and you don't do that people that's just bloody scary when people send me photos because that's what happens i get people and they send me photos of their homemade paint shakers which normally involves a piece of diy like a jigsaw or a pfc or something else like that and then strapping your paint to it that just worries the hell out of me that looks like an accident it's like we're beginning off a casualty anyway so anyway that's that one no problem at all don't forget all of these are probably available through the pm store as well i'll get the links for them and put them down below so next up paintbrushes as you know i'm a complete animal when it comes to paintbrushes one of my favorite ones to be honest is the ak ones 
these just keep keep going I can't speak highly enough about them which is amazing when we're about to look at somebody else's but they just work you know they actually work and you know me I am the most abusive person to paintbrushes you'll ever know in the modeling world because I see them as a tool and I'm not a figure painter or a hand painter so as far as I'm concerned I treat them like a pair of pliers but having a nice paintbrush is quite good so these are Tamiya's ones so this is, just before we get going with this, is the, uh, do, 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 do they have a normal number? Uh, high Finish HF. This is just called the uh, Paintbrush 3 Standard Set. So your number for this one is 87067700. So yes, there's no fancy name to that. So you get the three. So actually what you've got is a very nice sort of standard one. At the moment they're all together. So that's very nice indeed. Uh, no problem with that. So that's equivalent to a naught. So it's quite a short brush, but a nice good clump on that. So that looks quite nice indeed. Then we've got a very fine one here. So what's this one? In the great scheme of them, this is a. Oh, it hasn't got a number. Sorry, I thought it, that was a number naught. This is a number of we don't know. Anyway. But again, really very, very fine point. What's nice with it as well, it's got the long bristles, so that means it'll hold more paint. So if you are doing work, you'll get more out of it. Don't forget, obviously the paint is being held all by the bristles. If you haven't got much length in the paint, so if I show you my other one, which I've got here, like this one, as you can see, it's probably a third shorter. Uh, this is one of the uh, creative ones. But uh, I have got another one here somewhere. It's even shorter, uh, 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 which I probably can't remember what I've done with it now. There we go. And again, these other ones, they are about a third shorter in all cases. So yes, so we've actually got one of these, which is very similar to it as well, which is the uh, broken toad ones. Not too dissimilar, to be honest, on that one. But uh, as you can see, very nice. But having that longer brush length means it holds more paint, let's face it. And it's always nice to have a paintbrush with a point on it, something I don't have. But I do like the flat ones as well. I like these ones as well, because these are great for doing dry brushing, uh, but also working with oils. So if you're working with oils, uh, even if you're using them wet or dry, uh, you know, having a blade is a lot easier than around when you want to get in amongst things and stuff like that. And again, really very, very nice. There's a good density of bristles into there. It feels quite thick. So again, it should be very, very nice. And again, don't be like me. Look after your brushes and they will last you. Unless you're like me and then they won't. Uh, but yeah, so very, very nice with those three there. So that's the Tamiya, just a standard three pack of brushes. I'll get the things around the right way. There it is. Uh, so anyway, these are just called the HF series. So we've got a number two, a number naught, and a we don't know. So whichever one that is. Judging by the part numbers are all different as well. Maybe you can buy these as a separate, but again, I'm not sure about that one. You'll have to find out. But those look quite nice. So that's some new brushes that will get ruined shortly. Okay, last up. Something we've spoken about. And I'm, sorry, I'm just trying to find mine. Uh, here it is, just to show. What we've got down in here, this is a sheet of rounds and triangles. So uh, it's Mr. Hobby, so it's GT71 and then double dot 480. And again, from your sizes, it's three mil and then to five mil as in your holes. And then down in here, we've got triangles, which are three mil as well. So the point to this is, because I know what everyone's gonna say, but Phil, you've got one of these. And this is my infinity board. But obviously, as you can see up here, when I was trying to do the ones, for instance, on the Vulcan, it's not a exact science. You can probably see by that other hole up there and this one here, you see how it's not exactly crisp, purely because trying to do a hole three mil, uh, which is, that's a four mil, that's a five mil, uh, that's a five mil. Have we not got a three mil? Do you think there'll be a three mil in this? Out of all the sizes we got down in here, 2.5, then we've got 3.5, we've got, well there we go, it just shows. Just trying to get a hole in the actual size you want is pretty difficult. But this is my go-to for all my boards, as you know, and all the rest of it. And we've got your squares down in there, and you've got your triangles and all the rest of it. 
but just trying to get a blade in and do one that small it's one of those where you might have to do it three or four times before you get a good one and to be honest that's exactly what i did on the vulcan it took me about three attempts to do it and then lo and behold when we were discussing this i found out that do you know what there's somebody who makes them jesus that has to be the strongest piece of glue that's stuck anything together since sticky the stick insect okay so what have we got here this is your circles so hopefully you catch it in the light so obviously over here you got the bigger ones and over here you got the small ones so if i lift one out well you probably will need magnifiers for this you can see so by the time you've spent messing around trying to do one in here i'm just trying to see if there's one even i don't think there's actually one in there that's too small Hold on. do you know what i don't think there's actually that's a three right okay so it would have to be that one i'm going to put it in there up there that's the one you do it but to get it that small is just an absolute messing around and if we go to the other side of the equation let me just grab this one uh, which is going to be five mil we've got six 4.5s, 3.5s, so it's going to be 5 mil up here as well. I won't place it down, but as you can see how nice these are. These are absolutely clean, I just made a mess, clean circles, because they're completely die cut. Also, don't forget, you can, I'm going to do it because I've done it before with other sets, you can borrow and use them the other way around like this, the backing so if you need to do make a masking hole you can just use it the other way around so now you've got it done this way as well so it's really really handy for doing all your holes and your various things into it so again even though the infinity board is absolutely great trying to do very very small ones like these is an absolute ball like i can't get it as good so to show you this is obviously one of my failed attempts admittedly but it's one of my attempts nevertheless you can see the difference and that's slightly bigger on there than these but it gives you an idea so again you're probably not going to use the sheet every single time you build a model but it's really really nice to have something like this just sat in your um, in your drawer for your spares and your scratch building and all things like that so when it does come to the day where you could do with it you're golden you've got it there the other thing as well like down in here we've got little tiny triangles so on this sheet if you look at it you can probably see we've got them down in here these are proper icky wicky ones okay so triangles these as you can see really very very small and again if you're doing masking and you've got a you know little triangle areas and things like that trying to cut a triangle is an absolute nightmare so we got those and then as you say we got slightly uh, different ones over here so i can get one out cleanly these are actually really nicely die cut as well so you go you got full triangle and you've got your sort of pyramids down in here as well so for getting in for doing 90 degree corners you're covered and then obviously if you need to do your other ones sort of 135 degrees things like that you're covered as well so definitely really straightforward about how you want to do so think of this one as well for doing masking work on clear parts if you've got windows and things like that as well you can use these for the corners and then just do the rest with tape and things like that and then the same thing again you could cut around these and then use them as a mask and make your way through but there's lots of different ones in there i don't know how many you actually get on a sheet uh my japanese is not that good if it says how many is on a sheet perhaps it's 100 i think you get 100 circles is that is that what they're saying or 189 small ones 100 of the big ones and then down in here for the three mil ones you get 203 of the triangles and then the other ones we get 152 so like we said before this is one of those things buy once you'll never have to do it again because you've got it but seriously classic example that vulcan bomber i would have killed for that 
because that would have been absolutely perfect. The amount of times I was trying to get it right, don't get me wrong, it did do it, and I am happy with it, but it would have been nice just to pull out the sheet and say, oh, I've just got one of them in whatever size it is, pip it off, stick it on, job's done. Makes modeling so, so much easier than it does here, but you can probably see on these, that was me fiddling around trying to do holes. Yeah, not as good, definitely not as good. So definitely some food for thought for that one. So definitely can highly recommend those because I think they're really, really nice. Infinity boards as well. If you haven't got one, where have you been? Again, tools, I have to say, steel bar, you could use anything really, um, but it's just one of those. You buy it, you're done. You bung it in there. It is a case of buy once and you're okay. The brushes, again, you know what I'm like. I am horrible to brushes. They probably hate me as much as I hate them. I'm not really a hand painter or a figure painter or anything else like that, but a nice brush is really nice. It's one of those things. When you're using a nice brush, it just makes a lot of sense. The stirrer, paint stirrer, if you haven't got one, again, these are relatively cheap. It will last a lifetime as well, because it tends to. Uh, but really, I think the star for me, which I really thought was gonna be crap, uh, is the actual paint mix set. Uh, for the actual, uh, the stirrer, the putty set. Again, it's just something so simple, but it will last as long as you clean it out. And even if it doesn't, when it goes rock hard, you'll be able to bend this and it'll crack and flick off. And then you just put a bit of thinners over it and you're good to go. But all of them, you know, work really well. And again, it's one of those things you look at it and you think that's awful. That's just a cheap piece of junk. And it's a bit like we showed before those little blade sets. They work. They just actually work. It's really odd. It's for something like, I've used those tools lots and lots of times doing little tiny scratch building jobs and things like that, where I never thought I would. But it's like, you're like, oh, hold on, I've got that little tool. It does the job. And you think, God, that would have been a nightmare trying to use a razor saw on it or something else like that. It's a lot easier to use that. This, again, for me, I've got bits of plastic down here that I use. You know, you would have seen it if you saw me do it on the Spitfire last week. Classic example, next time I'll be using this. So again, a bit of a bargain on that one. So there we go, that's Tool Tuesday. It's nice to be getting back to these. Again, I've got some other bits and pieces coming uh, down the line as well for tools, which we'll be looking at. Some of them a bit more expensive, some of them just cheap and cheerful, a bit like this guy. But at the end of the day, if it works, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, that's about it from me. So I'm gonna carry on with the sub. We'll be getting that one to, down together today. Tomorrow I'm with you with Matt, uh, and obviously we're gonna be doing the PM show. So if you've got any questions for that, get them up nice and early, because obviously we'll be recording the show in the morning, and then you'll get it in the afternoon. And I will then get on with those reviews as well. So you'll probably get a review tomorrow, review on Thursday, and then obviously part one of that will be up with you on Friday as we make our way through. So there we go, that's it from me. Happy modeling, take care, and don't forget, all the things we've used today are available over at the PM store, links down below.